Hey love, in this video, I'm gonna talk about love. Since this space is for self-care with love, it seemed relevant. So what's your definition of love? My name is Miko and I'm the founder of Miko Care. We're creating a healthier world through self-care, primarily using technology. It's the, it's been like a gateway to me where I could access resources, whether it was books on Amazon, whether it was guided meditations and YouTube on YouTube, sound healing, um, tips and tools for processing trauma, for finding a state of well-being. My phone also helped me with journaling, which was really a priceless tool during times of upheaval and became the foundation for my self-care. Because no matter what my diet was, what no matter what my exercise practices were, which would fluctuate depending on my energy levels, my health, during cancer, during depression, um, during like extreme anxiety, I found journaling to be what sort of brought everything together and helped me to stay connected, see some continuity, be able to reflect on what I was doing, and even improve my memory. I'll share some of the studies that have been done on journaling. But this is from my experience, and it really became an expression of love for myself that allowed me to access more of my energy, my inner resources, in a way that was really simple. I could do it on my phone. And in fact, I found that journaling while standing, sometimes while walking, especially if it was like a video journal or taking selfies as a photo journal. There's something about the spine being straight that helped me to think more clearly and to be able to express myself. And self-expression is a form of love. So, Journaling was a big one, and I'm gonna go more into that, all the different types of journaling you can do, a couple of my favorite go-tos that I could do in any state of mind that would bring me uh, calm and center myself when things really felt overwhelming. And for those of you who may want to publish a book sometime or maybe you haven't thought of it until now but that could be a unique contribution that you could bring to the world um, of your honest thoughts and emotions as you process them and then go back and look at them you know put them in a format that you feel comfortable with that's been one of the things that I've kept in mind as I've journaled as well, because sometimes we reach a state of mind that is not our everyday state of mind. Maybe we're in the alpha state or the theta state, and we're able to express things that maybe when we're in the re regular everyday beta state, we're you know, we're busy with what's going on around us, with work, with whatever duty is calling us at the time. And so having that sacred space 
where we can express things without judgment. You know, some of the things might seem, especially if we're self-critical, might seem, uh, you know, like, oh, I don't want to say that or I don't want to um, put that into words. And I found that I've had gained the most benefits from allowing those parts of me to be seen with loving compassion. And sometimes that loving compassion was just observing and being with that state with as much presence as I could have. We all need to be seen and loved and witnessed even or especially during the times where we struggle with it the most. And there is an idea that we can only meet others as deeply as we've met ourselves. And that's what I feel is most so powerful about self-care with love is that we're deepening our ability to bring value to the world by practicing honoring our value within ourselves and letting ourselves know that we are worthy of deep love and excellent self-care, which really starts with presence. The other things will come, you know, and, and they'll change as we grow and evolve through life and go through different phases. Maybe we're really low energy and what the body needs is us to just witness it and to be present without trying to force ourselves to be a different way, even without forcing ourselves to be positive. If we think about it, to be the ultimate positivity is to be able to be positive even during our most negative states. And sometimes that looks like presence, just being with it. When we can't be with the negativity, that's almost like a judgment or a reinforcement of the negativity. And it kind of amplifies the experience. It's sort of like that example of saying don't look at the pink elephant or don't think about the pink elephant automatically a pink elephant comes to mind so the best way to diffuse intense negative emotions is to just give them space without resisting them and bearing in mind that we're coming from an intention of love. And so when we come from an intention of love, those negative emotions are expressed from a place of love. The intention is not to harm ourselves or to harm others. And if you or someone else is struggling with that, the ultimate act of love is to get support through this difficult time because you are worthy of that. And so is the rest of the world worthy of you being your best. And that's not an arbitrary best that someone else has given to you, you know, conditioning from times past that maybe is not applicable to where you're at in life right now. So journaling is a way to be with the feelings and to give them a voice and one thing we can keep in mind when we journal and we process the feelings whether they're negative whether they're positive whether we think they're ugly or whether we think they're beautiful often it's our perception and our ability to see different perspectives When we create that space 
we can also dedicate that act of loving kindness towards ourselves to others who aren't a similar emotional state, whether or not we know them. Because at a certain level, we're all energetically connected. The golden thread of life flows through us all. And I believe the Buddhists practice this. And if you follow my channel or you've known me for any length of time, you know that to me, integrative health brings everything together. So I try to find value. I do find value in so many different healing practices and modalities and philosophies. And back to the Buddhist uh, meditation of dedicating our suffering to other people who are also going through that same suffering and dedicating the healing to them as well. And we can do that through journaling. And when we come from that place, it can relieve some of the anxiety around the judgment of what we're doing or thinking like, oh, this is not good enough or, you know, what will other people think because we're doing a very beautiful thing. We're taking something that that feels the opposite of love and we're transmuting it. We're changing the substance of it through our intention. And often through life, no matter what we're doing, that there's that need to be seen and loved that's a driving force behind all of our actions. So if we're struggling with dependency or addiction, and traditionally, people think of addiction as addiction to substances. In my experience, when I was going through a tremendous amount of emotional pain, I saw that it didn't matter what the source of relief was. If one thing was taken away from me or I took it away from myself, if I didn't address that need to find relief or to be with the pain, then it would just crop up in a different way because I was fo focusing on the external expression of an internal problem, which was that I felt alone, scared, grieving, and I didn't know how to be with myself, but I was learning. And even as I say that, I realized that I did know how to be with myself. I just didn't think I did. And something that I found when I was tweeting during my distress under a different name, um, just expressing myself and trying to find some kind of support was you're stronger than you think you are. And I've tried to pass that along to others too who may be going through really challenging times. We're often much stronger than we think we are and what we're experiencing is identifying with our weakness. And if we dig super deep and we look at love, not as its expressions of affection, romance, warm connection, if we look at love as an intelligence, a presence, like qi in traditional Chinese medicine, energy, life force. If we look at love as life force, it changes our experience.
because then no matter what state we're in, we start to understand that love is there too. And when we embody that, people can feel that love no matter what we're going through. And it sparks a healing process in them, whether or not we're in a professional healing relationship. And the more we commit to exploring and practicing love for ourselves in everything we do, we're starting an energetic chain reaction in our lives and in the lives of everyone around us. And we can watch that with that same loving intelligence and it begins to teach us a new way of being. So all this came from using the resources that I had, which were a lifelong practice of meditation. This came very natural to me at a young age and I didn't even know what it was called. And it helped me to find inner resources to deal with things that were very, very difficult. And while it didn't save me from being a human being and having natural human reactions to painful experiences, it helped me to work through them in a way that allowed me to keep going and to find meaning and find beauty even in the most difficult things. On a more practical level, I found that even when I had very little else, my phone helped me to deepen my practice of love and self-care just through the simple act of journaling and finding resources that supported self-care. Because I think we all want to be our best and to feel a sense of belonging in the world, to contrib contribute something meaningful, even if we don't exactly know what that is. Maybe for you, that looks like being your best for your family. Maybe for someone else, it looks like being your best for your job. Maybe for someone else, it looks like being your best even though you're going through a serious illness. Or maybe you just feel like something's missing and you want to connect more deeply with the world. Self-care can help. To find that meaning. Typically, I think we're afraid of being selfish and so we'll sacrifice ourselves to be our best. But is that really our best? Is that sustainable? It's kind of like when you're flying in a plane and they tell you to put your own oxygen mask on first because if you don't, how are you going to help the people around you? So self-care is that oxygen mask that we put on ourselves and to get the most benefit and give the most benefit we don't want to only practice self-care in a reactive state when we have to bend there we want to create a practice of honoring ourselves and nurturing our value and learning as we go so that the times where we're 
having to do it and having to shift our focus get less and less. And from a different perspective, the more each of us does this, imagine how we could begin to change not only our lives, but the lives of everyone we touch and the world. What if the ripple effect of self-care became a more proactive approach and the resources that went along with it globally towards health? What if we were able to re-strategize and restructure so that everyone benefit, benefited from this proactive approach where there was abundance to go around, where there was, you know, maybe it sounds like a bit of a utopia and unrealistic, but isn't that a perspective? Would it be so bad to explore I don't remember who said it, but there's a, an idea that it takes a lot more um, intelligence to find harmony and creative solutions than it, than it does to use force. And with all the chaos that's gone on in the world lately, it seems like a response to that chaos is leaning into harmony. This is on my heart to share. When I was first diagnosed with breast cancer, and I already had a pretty strong health focus. I paid attention to what I ate, I even paid attention to not judging what I ate. As a personal trainer, I would, in fact, encourage people to eat whatever they felt like eating and to be with their food, even if it was junk food, with curiosity. I know, not the popular approach. However, this... this took away the friction and, crea and, and created more sustainable results. Because sometimes if you think about something, oh, I'm not supposed to do this, I'm not supposed to do that, and you're thinking against instead of inclusively, then you're just creating more, wasting more energy on that cycle. And you're requiring yourself to use more energy as well. So I had a deep understanding of how to find a healthy state and I was going through a divorce at the same time. The cancer diagnosis was both devastating and also clarifying. I thought, well, this makes sense actually. The chronic stress I've been under, the deep healing challenges uh, that started way before I even realized. And there was a certain peace in that. Okay, I know now that I have no choice but to focus on loving myself through this process, practicing self-care, even though I didn't use that term. You know, the suggestions started coming in from people, very well-meaning, what I should do. I started to meet people at the gym during work who were coming out of breast cancer. And I thought, how interesting is this? And 
one of the survivors, my client's husband, said a couple of things that really stuck with me. One was to use everything. Use the doctors, use holistic, use all of it. And the other was two words, be selfish. This is not the time to put others before your health, whether it's what you think you need to do or be, this is, this is the time to focus on you. It was very hard for me to receive because even though I knew that self-love or that love was a very powerful force and I believed that love was intelligence, I still struggled a lot with worthiness and I realized that if I was honest with myself, I needed the support of the medical system to help me get through the healing. And I realized that to my understanding of God, God could work through the medical system as well. And to me, God was love. Um, something beyond our imagination, beyond our understanding. And that my desire to find ways, practical ways to use that powerful intelligence for my own healing and through my experiences, the healing of others. Well, that was a, a deep moment of understanding. And so I meditated on all of this and on what my personal approach to healing during cancer would be. It couldn't come from the outside. It had to come from me. And this was how I would be selfish. And I say that obviously tongue in cheek because is it selfish to put your own oxygen mask on when the plane's going down so that you can put someone else's oxygen mask on? Even a child, an elderly person, even a person who's struggling, panicking, this makes the most sense. So I laid on my bed and I listened to what my body wanted to tell me. And all of a sudden it came to me. Cancer wants the same thing as I do. Cancer wants life. In fact, later I read a book, I can't remember the title right now, where can cancer is the body trying to contain toxins that have been circul circulating for a long time which I saw as the chronic stress and trauma. And it, it's the body's way of isolating that from the rest of the body. I'm sure we'll have future discussions on this. However, when I realized, had this understanding that cancer wanted, wanted life, 
and it was really an expression of me wanting life so desperately and yet feeling so much resistance to feeling worthy even of life. The next thought that came was that cancer was not the enemy because if I died, cancer would die too. And so then I realized the solution is not to fight the cancer. The solution is to find harmony within myself. And this feeling of peace just washed over me because I realized that I had released so much trapped power. I didn't want to fight another thing. And in in that acceptance of what was, the fact that I had a serious disease and that I understood on a personal level that this disease was an expression of me trying to find well-being in an all-hands-on-deck sort of way. I realized that what I needed to do was get in connection with my heart. And to find the ways that felt like love to me. And again, this is not necessarily affection or even romance. It's that deep abiding love that's just able to be there in the most difficult circumstances. So I made a commitment to focus on being selfish on leaning into the experience with love and seeing where I stood. Letting go of all of the expectations that I've ever put on myself, expectations I had let other people put on me, and just showing up and putting one foot in front of the other as life changed around me and inside of me. And I've showed no evidence of disease for several years now. And the practice of love has only continued to deepen. And I freed up a lot of energy through the art of effortless action. Or put another way, riding the horse in the direction it's going. Using journaling, using my phone to find the resources that supported that direction. Trusting that my body was bringing up things that needed healing. Trusting that even through sickness, our body is always trying to find its most healthy state. And sometimes it just seems like it's going in a roundabout way. So recently, I 
I started to re-examine that love again in a new way as I came out of the cancer journey, as I thought about how I wanted to show up in the world. My own greatest contribution, what made the most sense with my energy levels. And I just kept coming back to this vision that seems huge and ridiculous. And yet, all throughout history, there were things that once seemed utterly ridiculous that are now a way of life. And I thought, well, what if celebrating self-care with others who also celebrate self-care or want to celebrate self-care and support each other in caring for ourselves so that we can bring the greatest value to the world through our uniqueness. What if that is what I'm meant to do and be a part of? What if instead of thinking of my flaws and my shortcomings and focusing on trying to make those better, what if I instead started to look back at everything that has helped me and all of the value that I found through something as simple as my phone and a sincere desire to be my best even when I felt like I had nothing to offer and realizing that those many years ago when I was so depressed, my bones felt like they were made of iron and the energy it took just to leave my room would make my mind go in so many directions all at once. It was all I could do to put one foot in front of the other. I realized the best thing I could do for the world right now the best thing I could do for my loved ones, best thing I could do for my son was to really understand what love looks like, even when life feels like despair. Now this might all sound really intense and sometimes it is. And what if within that intensity is a hidden resource of energy that can be transformed, transmuted into more life force? What if the things that I was most afraid to share because I kept thinking, no one will get this, this doesn't feel very practical, let me hear what other people have to say. What if instead I freed up some more of that energy that allowed me to go from just recognizing that self-care and love was one of the most important things I could do to gaining the energy to put one foot in front of the other to make, de make decisions that would completely change my reality and find the tactics and the techniques to practice self-care every day. When I had high energy and when I had low energy. And it's a continual practice. And so I wanted to share that practice with you 
this practice with you, just speaking from my heart, which is actually, doesn't deserve the word just in front of it. Speaking from my heart, which is our most, our hearts are so much more powerful than we have been led to believe. And even science is starting to support the, that reality that our heart has enormous intelligence and can help to center us even in times of incredible stress. So at the heart of all of Miko Care, which has all been accessed through technology, is that heart intelligence. It's that ability to be with things and to have that loving presence with all of our emotions and in doing that, transform them into something that communicates life and vitality. And when we're in a state of despair, hope that this too will pass. So journaling and loving intelligence, that's the foundation that I think any self-care practice can be built on that can flow into everything you do, no matter what fitness regimen, no matter what diet, no matter what doctors you visit, or if you visit no doctors, it's so powerful and it's flexible and you can do it no matter what religion you believe in or no religion. You can do it if you can pick up your phone and type a little bit. So wrapping up now, what's your definition of love? And what sort of loving practices have you found the most powerful in your own care that you'd like to pass on for others' benefit or future generations from your unique experience and that one amazing life on this planet that is yours? Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. I would love to hear what you think or read what you think in the comments below. And if this spoke to you or you agree with anything I've said, do like share and subscribe as we go on a journey of self-care with love together. Much love, Miko. I wanted to add a PS on self-love and self-care and processing big emotions. When we make a decision to do that, sometimes all fear breaks loose. And it's like, this is gonna completely change my relationships. And it might. Um, this is going to hurt other people. I wanna say something on that when we're coming from a place of love and confidence in ourselves and others.
the relationships that are based on deep love and respect, including the relationship we have with ourselves, the compassion we have with ourselves, that will never change. And by me saying that will never change means that it's the superficial connections that we find comfort in. Those may change. And when we're coming from a place of intending love towards ourselves and compassion towards ourselves, we will extend that love and compassion and that confidence, that trust in the process and that the things that were not rooted in deep love will fall away maybe for a time, maybe for a longer time. And here's the other thing that I realized, and that is that love can show up in a lot of different ways. And sometimes love shows up in distance, in allowing someone the space that is going to be most beneficial for them to be how they need to be for their own development, growth, and well-being. And that love is not limited to time or space, but is expressed through time and space. So when we deepen our commitment to loving ourselves and through loving ourselves, loving others in the most beneficial ways, sometimes we can get scared and that's something we can explore from a place of loving kindness. I know this is deep and I want to thank you for exploring this with me, for having the courage to look at this and the commitment to be your best in the world and for yourself. Much love. PPS. <laughs> well, I talked about things falling away when we practice that deep self love, when I've practiced that and made that commitment, we will find new loving connections as well. And love will show up in the ways that we can most easily receive it. And you can kind of think it think of it as a treasure hunt that comes along with just being with yourself and being with yourself like you might be with a small child you know that takes a tremendous amount of strength and you are worthy of that strength and that compassion and that loving presence, even if maybe you, it feels like you've never felt it or it's been a long time since you felt it, that's something that we can create inside of ourselves and it will be reflected in the world around us. And it's our perception that's going to to change how we interpret what's going on. You know, what are we coming from? What place are we coming from in the deepest heart of us?
And the more we are able to love ourselves deeply, the more we embody that deep love in all our actions and other people will feel it and see it even if they don't consciously think oh that's a person who loves themselves they'll feel the vibe and the chain reaction in them will start and wouldn't it be wonderful if people truly love themselves deeply I don't think selfish you know people who are selfish which is doing things that are best for them at the expense of others are truly coming from a loving place they're coming from a place of lack and uh, pretty much a lack it's like I'm not enough and so I need what's yours too whereas you are enough and the more you believe it, the more we believe it, the more we celebrate it, the more it will find us. In sometimes amazing and mysterious ways that come from uh, the electromagnetic power of the heart. And the heart can blow the mind. So let your heart blow your mind too. Much love again, Miko.